Good morning, everybody. Good to see you. Uh, good to be here on this fine 4th of July weekend. And uh, God's so good that we're able to be here today. Um, just a quick announcement to remind you that on July 26th at 6 o'clock, out here at the Picnic Pavilion, we're going to have... Uh, Nashville recording artist Christian Davis here. Uh, we're going to have some worship and a time of, uh, he'll be doing a lot of great music. If you've not checked him out on YouTube, uh, please do that. Christian Davis, great. Uh, it's good gospel music and country and bluegrass and uh, all the stuff that a lot of us enjoy. And uh, he's a great singer, great speaker. Uh, his witness will speak a lot to you about what he and his family's been through during this pandemic of, and how God's been so faithful to him. So uh, so keep that on your calendar. And what we'll do is, uh, is we'll park in the parking lot and uh, bring your lawn chairs or a blanket and everybody can spread out in the grass on the other side of the picnic pavilion. We'll, I'll have him set up on the picnic pavilion facing the farm behind us and so it'll kind of be a little amphitheater kind of thing so uh, we'll have plenty of room to spread out and uh, be safe and the winds will blow and keep us safe out there but uh, pray for good weather and uh, I'm very excited about it of course I've got I've gotten to see him sing so it's all it's easy for me to be excited about it and, and uh, those of you who like live music understand you know, you can go watch him on YouTube, but there's nothing that compares to hearing a great singer live right in front of you. So uh, keep that in mind. Also, keep in mind, uh, we're all invited to go over to Drennan Christian Church to enjoy another great singer from Nashville, Tim Menzies. We'll be over there at their 11 o'clock service. And I'd love for some folks to go over there and support them over there because their church is coming uh, to join us at six o'clock here. So we're doing a little uh, community county ministry action there. I'm very excited about that. Pastor Corey and I uh, have loosely coordinated this, but, um, but I'm just thankful to see God's church doing things together. I think that's a, I think that's a good, healthy thing for us to do. So um, keep that in mind, keep that on your calendar. Uh, also, last week I asked if anybody would be interested in a Wednesday or Thursday night uh, uh, event, Bible study, something like that. And I've really prayed about it this week. And uh, I think what I'm going to do is, um, and it'll be online. Uh, we won't do it in person, not at least for a while. I think we might do that, add that later. But I, would, I will be doing it on Facebook Live um, 
I'll probably start this Wednesday night uh, uh, at 6.30. So, uh, but it, it's going to be kind of a revolving thing in my mind is what it's going to be. Uh, sometimes it might be music. Sometimes I might bring in other pastors uh, to talk and interview and and it might be funny stuff, and it might, it might be uh, just me reading scripture or a prayer service. So keep that in mind also, and um, and we'll we'll start out and we'll see maybe if Wednesdays or Thursdays or different times. And of course, much like our services, uh, if you miss it at the time, the beauty of it is you can catch it at another time, any time that's convenient for you, almost like a podcast type situation. So uh, I'll, be, I'll be doing something this Wednesday night. I'm still praying about what God wants, wants me to do, but, but uh, uh, 6.30 on Wednesday nights, tune in, check in, and uh, just see what, see what happens. And, uh, and uh, just another way that we can reach out and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, and our world needs more and more of that, as we all know. So uh, mark that on your calendars as well. Um, any other announcements? Probably not, because nothing's really going on. <laughs> we don't have backpacks or things like that. So um, keep that. Uh, if you have announcements, let me know ahead of time. Uh, let's pray, and also, uh, if at home you have uh, your communion elements, and folks, if you grabbed your, your communion cup on your way in, here in just a few minutes, I'm going to have Barbara play for a few minutes when I finish my prayer, and uh, Barbara will play, and then um, we'll have communion. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you so much. We're so happy that we can be here together, Lord Jesus, whether it's here in person and we are actually seeing each other, which is a beautiful, wonderful thing, or whether uh, for the folks who are joining in via Facebook or watching later on YouTube, Father God, Lord Jesus, we just pray that you'll bless us and help us. Father God, we pray that our coming together our worship is a pleasing gift to you, Father God, for all that you've done for us. That, Father God, we would just live in gratitude all the time for your sacrifice and your great love and your mercy for redeeming us and helping us. Lord Jesus, I know each and every one of us have a long, huge prayer list, Father God, of people we're praying for. Lord Jesus, for many different things, folks who have... Uh, are dealing with grief, struggling, and mourning loss. Father God, people that are dealing with um, injuries and wounds, both physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional. Father God, Lord Jesus, we pray for the folks who have diseases and illnesses, COVID and cancer and so many other things, Father God, that trouble us and our bodies in this world, Father. But Lord Jesus, we lift them all up to you, every name, every person. And Lord Jesus, we lift them up to you for healing and help, for peace and comfort. And Lord Jesus, we pray most of all for those who do not have a knowing of you or have rejected you outright. Father God, we pray for the lost, the poor lost souls that don't even realize, Father God, that with their last heartbeat, It'll be over. They won't have another chance. So, Father God, we pray for salvation, for surrender, Lord Jesus, and that they would come to know what it feels like to be redeemed by you, the one true living God. Lord, we just pray, 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 pray for our country. We pray for the leaders. And, Lord Jesus, help us as believers remember that it says one nation under God doesn't matter who gets elected. doesn't matter who the leaders are up in Washington or Frankfurt or Newcastle or wherever it happens to be, Father God. This nation is under you. Help us to remember that, Lord Jesus. And help us to pray that every day, that your leadership over this nation would prevail over anything else. Father God, help us to love our neighbors, to live in brotherhood, in unity. Help us, Lord. Help us to know what we can do. 
Thank you for this beautiful, glorious July weekend. Lord, help us to shine your light, to be kind, to be courteous and helpful, and to love people and to love you. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. So I'm going to ask Miss Barbara if she'll come and play. So over the next couple of minutes, take your time and, and take your communion the body and the blood of Christ that was broken and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins and the sins of so many. Everything you've ever done, anything you'll do today, anything you'll do tomorrow, he'll forgive. Just let that juice remind you of his blood that washes you clean every time you use it, every time you take it. And for his body that took the beating, the nails, the cross, so that you don't have to. So today, our scripture lesson is, is Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, beginning with verse 2. You'll remember this verse. You've seen this verse. You've heard this verse. But I think given our times, where we're at in our world, where we're at in our nation, I really do believe that uh, maybe we need to focus and put some more focus on this passage of Scripture, which ultimately means putting more focus on Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning in its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. So, in today's world, it is even more important, I think, every day that goes by, and let's face it, every day that goes by, we're getting closer and closer to the second coming. We're getting closer and closer every day. We don't know when that is. We don't have to know when it is. That's the beauty of our faith, is we just need to trust him. That whether it's a thousand years from now, whether it's tomorrow, we just need to trust him. And we need to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. And, and the word fixed is like the word focused. We need to keep our eyes fixed on him. You know, when, when Peter was walking across the water, remember? Jesus said, just keep your eyes on me. Keep looking at me. So we need to keep our eyes on him. We need to keep our eyes fixed on him. And why? Why do we need to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus? Because he not only pioneered and founded our faith, he's perfected it. So if we'll just keep our eyes on him, he won't steer us wrong. We may have a, 
a misstep here and there. We may stub our toe every now and then. Of course we will. We're, we're human beings. That's going to happen. But, but if we just keep our eyes on him, even when we stumble, even when we struggle, even when we have things that aren't going right, we need to remember, we, we need to somehow keep this in our minds that he endured the cross. He could have fled the son of God. He could have gotten out of it, but he didn't. He chose. He endured the cross. It says here in uh, Hebrews 12, 2, that he, he scorned the shame. So he took it. He was marched through the streets in front of thousands of people, and they they hurled rocks at him, and they spat on him, and, and they said insulting things. And, and I don't know that any of us would have even made it through the streets, not to mention what he took for us, what he endured for us at Golgotha. I don't know that any of us would have made it that far. But he did. And he did it knowing what his outcome was. But you know what? It wasn't about his outcome. It was about the outcome for us. That's why he did it. And that's why we need to keep our eyes fixed on him. We're going to endure some suffering. And that's going to happen before we experience the full joy of knowing and following Jesus. It's just part of it. Now what we must realize is that the way that life works... The truth is that life is meaningless without Jesus. Life is meaningless without Jesus. If Jesus isn't real, if God isn't real, then ultimately we're just high-functioning animals. And all that matters is survival for as long as we can. That's the truth of it. The truth is if there's no God and Jesus wasn't real, then we're just high-functioning animals. But the good news for us is we have a higher reason for living. It's true. We have a higher reason for living. We have a purpose, and God has a plan for us. And we need to remember that. We need to be reminded of that every single day. We have a purpose here. We have a reason for living, and God has a plan for us. And some days we go through life not knowing exactly what that is. Sometimes we don't know exactly why we're here. Sometimes we question that. But, you know, if, if we're loving people and being kind to people, and we're trying to exhibit the things that God teaches us on how to behave, how to live, how to relate to people, then we are living out his purpose for us. I know it sounds oversimplified, but it's true. It's true. Now, I want to make it perfectly clear that, that finding happiness is a, not our primary goal for existing. Okay? Being happy is not our primary goal for existing. We all like to be happy. We all want to be happy, but that's not our primary goal for existence. Our primary goal for existence is to follow Jesus and trust that where he leads us will be a place where we find contentment, where, where we find peace, where we find joy, where we find happiness. You know, didn't your, uh, didn't your, your parents ever tell you, be careful who you hang out with, who you, who you go with, who you follow? That some people are going to lead you down a good path. Some people are going to lead you down a not so good path. And you need to be wise in choosing who that is. Well, let me tell you, grown-ups, it's no different for us. If you're follow, following Jesus, you're on a good path. I didn't say an easy path. I said you're on a good path. If you're following anyone else but Jesus... It may not be the best path for you. 
And again, I don't want to sound oversimplified, but that's the truth of it. If we're following and trusting Jesus, it can only lead to good things. Not always easy things, but always good things. You see, this is what I believe, and I think a lot of you believe that too, is that Jesus is the hero that the world needs. Jesus is the hero this world's looking for. You know, there's all these superhero movies and TV shows, and, and they're more and more all the time. And I truly, truly believe is, is that in people's hearts, they need a hero. They need somebody they can trust, somebody that they believe will protect them or help them in times of trouble. And the truth is, Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, all those are made up. They're all pretend. But the one true real hero is Jesus. He's real. He's real and he never, never goes back on a promise. He never breaks a promise. So you can read this Bible a hundred times through, learn every promise that he puts in there, and you'll find that he never breaks a promise with you or anyone else. And that's my definition of a hero. It's someone who says what they'll do, and then they do it. <coughs> Our little world here you know, it really does make it difficult <clears throat> to keep your eyes on Jesus. This world makes it difficult to stay focused on the things of God and the things of heaven. Even though we, we have the promise of heaven, the promise that Jesus says he'll go prepare a place for you, I mean a place for you individually, not just to mention everybody but he's going to go and prepare a place for us so that when we get to heaven, we'll have a home. And it'll be far greater than any home we can ever have here. But the world makes it difficult for us to keep our eyes on Jesus. You know, there's so many distractions. You know, isn't there? There's so many distractions. And, and it seems like there's more every day. You know, that there's distraction in busyness. There's distraction and work every, uh, every one of us in this room know a workaholic that they are so laser focused on doing a job and that a lot of their affirmation comes through doing a job that that they are they're almost uh, bound to it we all know somebody like that a lot of times that's a distraction Every aspect of our life can have distractions. So, so what do you do? So what do you do to avoid distractions? Some, I mean, you have to work, right? All of us need hobbies or, or things that we enjoy and do. But how do you avoid letting those things in your lives become just regular life versus becoming distractions that keep you from some of the other things that you need to do or want to do. Well, I believe this. I believe that if we uh, use these following methods, like praying without ceasing. You know, I don't know about you, but a lot of times I'm, pr I'm praying in the most mundane situations. Sometimes I'm just driving to work and that's one of my prayer times. The radio typically is not on. Uh, I, I, I just talk with God a little bit. I pray. I wake up in the morning and I have prayer time. I pray before I go to sleep. Most of the time I'm falling asleep while I'm praying. You know, and I think God loves that. You ever been reading a book to your kid at night? You're not finished with the book. You look over and there they are laying asleep, right? It's a beautiful thing, isn't it? And sometimes you just find yourself sitting there looking at them, what they look like, so sweet and innocent and quiet. <laughs> and they've fallen asleep. You don't get mad because you didn't get to finish the book, right? You find yourself in the glow of how much you love that child. Well, I believe that about God too. I think if you're talking to him and fall asleep at night, 
I think he just pats you on the head and goes, that is so cute. So we need to pray without ceasing. We not only need to read our Bibles, we need to learn to study our Bibles. We need to get into them. We, we need to have, I honestly believe, we, have, we need to have some type of devotion. I believe that. I, I think that helps us. But I think also it is very, very important for us just to open the Bible and read it and study it and think about it, meditate on it, and, and God will put it into your heart, and it will become part of your life. And there'll be times when people are speaking or things will be happening, and out of your consciousness, your subconsciousness, your spirit, Scripture will arise, and it'll be relevant, and you'll need it at that time. That's the beauty of the living Word of God. It's real, and it's alive in your life. And let me tell you something. You don't hear a lot of preachers talk about this, but the Word of God, the Bible, and the Holy Spirit are connected. It's connected. It's supernatural, and it's powerful. So if you feel disconnected from the Holy Spirit, study your Bible, and I can promise you I promise this. I'm not making this up. I promise you, if you study and read your Bible, you will begin to feel a connection with the Holy Spirit like you've never felt before. It's an amazing and beautiful thing. So pray without ceasing. Read and study His Bible. And listen to this. This is something it takes time, but I really do think it's important. I think if you'll spend time talking to other believers about Jesus, about Scripture, about the way you feel, asking questions. Spend time talking to other believers. And if you're a new, new believer or, or if you have questions, go hang out and spend time with somebody who's further on their faith walk than you are. Somebody who's further along on their journey. And you'll know who that is. You probably already do know who that is. Spend time asking questions of someone. And, and let me tell you, most of the time, if you ask a believer and they don't know the answer, they'll, they'll say, well, give me a little time. I don't know right off the top of my head, but I'll find out. Have, have the patience and understanding that it's okay to do that. Find yourself a spiritual mentor. And it doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are. Sometimes we all have questions, no matter how long we've lived in this life. It's okay. It's okay to have questions. It's okay to wonder. And you know something? This world teaches us not to do this, but it is absolutely, I believe, and the Bible says, necessary to tell others about where we fall short. Yes, we need to tell the Lord and ask the Lord for forgiveness for our sins. But I think it's really, really important that we have people around us that we can say, Man, will you pray for me? I am messed up. I, I'm, I'm out of focus. I need you to pray for me. I'm struggling with spending too much time at work. I'm struggling with my health. I need to... Stop smoking. I have COPD. I need, I, pray for me. Pray for me. You know, whatever it happens to be, whatever that situation happens to be, have a, another believer in your life that you can say, pray for me about this. There's strength in numbers, people. This is the way God intended our lives to be. Communicating with him constantly and communicating and leaning and depending upon each other. Even though the world teaches us that that's not fair, that it's all about us, that our needs are the only thing that matters, that is not true. That is not the truth. And that is not a way to live a happy life. I'm telling you right now. 
taking care of number one, being selfish, is not the way to be happy. You'll never, ever be happy. You'll never be content. You'll never be satisfied. This passage of Scripture is here to remind us to avoid having that laser focus on our own trials and struggles. Instead, we need to keep our focus on the God who's over all of them. I believe that God knows everything that's going on inside of me, the things I struggle with, the trials I'm going through, and some of those things I can only talk to him about. And guess what? Some of those things, he's the only one who can help. If we can somehow manage to keep our eyes on Jesus, we'll discover that those trials and struggles are easier to manage and we'll even have more peace while we're going through them. You know, instead of getting so angry or so disappointed that we lash out at somebody or even ourselves, instead of doing that, we say, okay, God, I need you, and I need you right now. And let him do his thing. So we need to ask ourselves, where is our focus? Do we focus more on God, or do we focus more on our circumstances? Do we worry more about our struggles instead of trusting in God? Do I stay in fear because I'm always imagining what-if scenarios? Well, what if this happens? What if that happens? If Jesus says to you today, sell everything you own and go here and do this, are you going to go home and start packing? Call the real estate agent, selling my house, selling everything I own. I'm going to... Africa, I'm going to the Philippines, I'm going to inner city New York, I'm going to LA, I'm going to Korea, uh, uh, put my house on the market, uh, God's called me to go here, go there. Are you going to go do that or are you going to go, but, but, but God, what if, what if, what if this happens, what if that happens? Are we paralyzed by fear because of what-if scenarios? What if this person I want to have a relationship with, what if they hurt me the same way somebody else did? What if I can't trust them? We can become paralyzed by fear. And let me tell you something. Humans will always battle with what our flesh desires. We'll always battle with doing what's easy. We'll always battle with what's doing, what makes us feel good. But that can change. The best way to change your point of view, the best way to change what you're looking at, is to look at something else. To change your point of view, put your focus on something else. What, do you, what is your point of view today? Well, where is your focus today? Having a comfortable retirement? Taking care of your kids? Making sure all the bills get paid? I'm not saying it, any of that's not important. I'm not saying that. Making sure that you feel good? You get to do the things that you like. Where is your focus? So the best way we can change is to change our point of view. We can learn to look up to Jesus, our hero. And if we look up to him, then we're less likely to be fixated on the problems we're having down here. You ever notice that? It's hard to be depressed when you're singing praise songs. When we keep our eyes on him, we're less tired. We're less weary. We become stronger. 
when we put our focus on him. You ever notice that? We all go through seasons where maybe we're a little closer to the Lord, maybe we're reading our Bibles more, we're praying more, and then there's times when we're maybe in a season where we're less focused on Him. You ever notice how much more energy you have? How much better you feel when you are more intimate with the Lord? You're studying, you're, you're wanting to serve people, you're wanting to do stuff to help the church or help people somewhere, and you're doing things. Even though you, know, you may work 8, 10, 12 hours a day, but you may go uh, work at Waterstep, or, or you may go to the help center, or you may go pack backpacks in Campbellsburg, or, or you may just stop and help somebody outside the road, or, or you may pay for somebody's groceries behind you, or, or a, a million different things. You ever notice how energized you are? How much less tired you are? Then sometimes you just get off work and you just want to go home and get in the lazy boy and just rest and not be bothered. And it seems like you can never catch up on your rest. They're always tired. I mean, there's a reason for that. God energizes us. He empowers us when we're doing the right things. When our focus is right, we feel better. So raise your eyes up a little more. Keep your focus on him. Lift your chin up a few inches and look up to the heavens. And talk to the Lord. Look into the vision of his face that you have. And, and look into his eyes. Well, maybe in your case, you do better to close your eyes and to focus on the vision that God uh, gives you of what he looks like. And, and you tell God and say a little prayer that you really want to trust him and you really want him to teach you how to keep your eyes fixed on him. It's truly something we have to learn. I'm convinced of that. We have to learn a lot of these things. A lot of the things of the faith are contrary to our natural world. The way we think and the way we do things. I want to I read you the lyrics for the chorus to a, a song that I love. Uh, Maddie actually got me hooked on this song uh, years ago. But it's a song by the, the, the group For King and Country. I know several of you know about For King and Country. Great group, great songs. They have a song called Fix My Eyes. This is the chorus. And if this, this song's several, several years old. But if this song, if this, these lyrics, this chorus isn't meant for today, I don't know when it was. But listen to this. I'll love like I'm not scared. Give when it's not fair. Live life for a brother. Fight for the weak ones. Speak out for freedom. Find faith in the battle. Stand tall. But I've listened to this. But above it all, fix my eyes on you. On you, God. Love like you're not scared. A lot of people are scared to love. A lot of people build up defenses. They're afraid of loving. Afraid of being hurt. Afraid of being used. But in God's kingdom, we need to love like we're not scared. We need to give when it's not fair. You ever thought, why don't all those big, giant, rich people give their money away? Why don't they do that? Well, some of them do. Some of the richest people in the world are also the biggest givers in the world. But God's not going to hold us accountable for what they give. God's going to hold us accountable for what we give. Not always talking about money either. Give when it's not fair. Sometimes that's our time. Sometimes that's our talents. Sometimes it's our money. Sometimes it's just our love. For listening ears can be a lot of things.
live life for another, take time for a brother, fight for the weak one, speak out for freedom, find faith in the battle, stand tall, but above it all, keep your eyes on Jesus. Uh, I hope that we can all strive to fix our eyes on him, especially given the, the state of the world right now. If you take your eyes off him any at all, you could find yourself feeling hopeless right now. Isn't that true? If you, if you focus too much on what's going on in the world right now, it can, you can feel pretty bleak about things. But let me tell you something. The promise of God is that if we follow him, he's going to take care of us regardless of what the circumstances are out there. We have nothing to worry about. His promises are not going to change no matter how bad it gets out there. Okay? Remember that. It's really important for us to keep focused on that. True happiness, true contentment, true joy, true peace all come only from God. He's the source of those things. We need to learn that and remember that. Contentment, joy, peace all come from God. If you find yourself consumed by the struggles, then find a way to lay them down. Don't, don't live out any more of your life the slave to your struggles, your trials. Spend the rest of this day giving your worries over to him. It's so easy for us to listen to a message, listen to a sermon, listen to a life lesson, whatever you want to call it. And in our heads we're going, yes, yes, yes. Maybe even in our hearts we're going, yes, yes, yes. But then we have to change something. Something has to change. Something has to be different. That's where we stub our toe a lot of times. Part of fixing your eyes on Jesus is making up your mind to fix your eyes on Jesus. So think about that today. Pray about that. You know, I encourage you, you know, most of you have a smartphone or, or a, a internet or, or a laptop or computer. I encourage you to listen to the For King and Country song, Fix My Eyes. You know, listen to that maybe once, once a day, every day this week. It will pump you up. It's an upbeat song. It's got a great beat. You can dance to it. But it's got an incredible message. Let's move forward. Let's fix our eyes on Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, uh, it, it is difficult because there's so many distractions. And some of the distractions we have in our lives are not necessarily bad things. But we do need to make sure that we are keeping our eyes fixed and focused on you, Father God. Lord Jesus, put the things into our lives that we need that help us focus on you. And Father God, there are things in every one of our lives that need to be eradicated. They need to be taken out. Father God, Lord Jesus, uh, I'm on Facebook right now, but Father God, if Facebook is a, is a distraction, keeping someone from focusing on you, Father God, delete that. Get rid of it. If social media makes you so angry that you can't focus on the good things, get rid of it. Get rid of it. Maybe, maybe someone watching or listening has a gambling problem or a drinking problem or a drugging problem or, or extramarital affairs or, or relationship problems that, that, that need to go away. Father God, Lord Jesus, give us the strength. There are some things in our lives that we keep doing that we endure, but we don't have to. Father God, Lord Jesus, give us all strength to prune the things out of our lives that we don't need, that are not of benefit. 
in the things that we do have in life, Lord Jesus, that we do enjoy. Father God, help us use them for the gain of your kingdom. Lord Jesus, we praise you and thank you. You're so good. Help us, protect us, defend us, be with our country and state and communities and leaders. Father God, Lord Jesus, be with everybody on our prayer list, all the sick and hurt and diseased. And Lord Jesus, help us to shine light wherever we go and whatever we do. Your precious and holy, amazing, wonderful, incredible name we pray. Amen. Have a great day. Amen.